Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. Hey humans, today I'm gonna show you how to reduce, not remove, some hiss in your analog recording. Here we go. I say reduce, not remove, because we are not vibe killers on this channel. This is not a hiss-free zone. I'm intolerant of intolerance of hiss. And my broken ear doesn't really mind the hiss very much either. There may be hardcore analog aficionados who will disagree with me today, and I will address them with a soliloquy at the end of the video. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you two mixes featuring singer-songwriter Jimmy Davis. Louder and climb high Some of you out there notice this hiss. For my personal music, I've never used noise reduction on the way in or denoising in post-production, but sometimes you're faced with a special case scenario when working with other humans. And after you've finished recording and mixing, you may find an intolerable level of noise in your mix, as I did for Jimmy Davis. Intolerable is obviously totally subjective, but you'll know when you don't like the amount of hiss. Trust me. And in order to feel comfortable distributing your music to the masses, you may feel obligated to reduce the noise, and today I will show you how. Speaking of distribution, I've never been sponsored by anyone or anything in my life. Truth be told, I have had a couple of different companies who will remain nameless reach out to me in the recent past, but I quietly rejected their offers because I did not believe in their products. I'm saying that to say this is not the case with today's sponsor, DistroKid. Distribution is actually very complex and DistroKid makes getting your music onto all platforms. Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, Angami. I see you Arabic speaking fam. DistroKid makes it very, very easy. DistroKid also gets your music on social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat if you still use Snapchat. And for the love of all things holy, please, please, I know more than half of you watching this video could come up with a better viral song than this one. We live in a magical time. Back in the day, the music industry had so many gatekeepers. It only cost one hot Andrew Jackson minus one cold Abraham Lincoln to upload an unlimited number of songs and albums. If you're prolific, this can really actually save you money compared to other distributors which charge per upload. And unlike other companies, you keep 100% of your royalties. It's the fastest, easiest way to get it all done in one place. If you sign up, it's also a great way to support this channel. Click on my VIP link below and save 7% on your first year. Lastly, all of my professional musician friends use DistroKid. And like I said before, I would not have accepted the sponsorship if I didn't believe in it or use the product myself. Anywho, back to the noise. Yes. Back on that mid-January day, if I had not been rolling the Tascam on that first take while recording Jimmy Davis, the performance would have been lost in the sands of time. So let's denoise that sucker. Is this sacrilege? Will the analog god smite me and rain broken capacitors down upon me and all of my gear? Find out with me when we go into computer land. Okay, here we are in computer land. Uh, I use logic as a DAW. You could use anything. Today, my main denoising software is made by Isotope, RX7 Spectral Denoise. Now I know a lot of you who may already use Isotope use uh, the platform on, you know, they, they have their own software, but you can use them as plugins as well. Sometimes my workflow is easier for me to just use it as a plugin and then bounce it inside of Logic. It takes up a lot of your computing power. These plugins are magic and powerful and they take a lot of computing. It's not the kind of plugin that you just leave on. Anyway, here we are, and we're going to look at the tune today uh, by Jimmy Davis. If you haven't seen breaking down the mix of those, go check that out right now. I've disabled all plugins except my denoiser, and then I'm just kissing this track with a little bit of uh, just a hair of compression. Let's start by listening to a section of this song with the denoiser, 
and then we'll play the same section with the denoiser bypassed. So here we go with denoise. My head in the clouds, people doubt me. How about now? Well, you I'm can still tell it was made on tape, but guess what? Doubt. Check this out. My head in the clouds, people doubt me. Big difference, How about huh? now? Let's put it back in. Still around, you still doubt me. Now, I'm a fan of noise and I'm a fan of hiss, but again, that's too much hiss even for me. Basically, is this was the first take and it's what we got. Now, I'm going to show you what I did. When I'm first going for noise, you know, trying to denoise something, it's always important to remember this. Rule number one is always get some stuff from before the song starts and after, like this. So this is after the recording. As you can see there, I leave myself a tail, and I also do it near the beginning. You can hear the difference. Yeah. So then I, f I find a spot where there's no music and there's noise, and we cycle that. All right, here we are looping the noise. Now, I've got the plug-in bypass. Let me engage it. But what's more important is Isotope does all the work for you. Hit learn. Now it's it's gathering the information of this quiet section. This is supposed to be quiet, but it's all the noise, all the hiss that you hear. So then you stop it, and now it's got this curve going. Once the software has learned what the noise is, we're going to use the rest of these controls to do even more because it's it's not perfect what Isotope just did there. So let's go to a section of music because it's still pretty noisy right now, but let's hear what that's like in context. That have been despite the fact I can't win. I can't win. You know what? This was a good example. I think I picked the wrong place to for it to learn the denoise. So let's go to the end here. Because that's the sound. Yeah. And I think honestly a lot of that is also the reverb that I used. Let's do this again. Now I'm in a different section. And let's learn. You can see the curve changed a little bit. Let's go to some music. When it screams, it's the best that I've been. All right. Now we've learned our noise profile. Now let's listen to that again in context without messing with any of these uh, uh, dials yet. Been stumbling okay. for weeks. Should have taken the hint when it all right, it's doing a lot. It's the best that I've been, despite the fact I can't win, I can't win, I can't win. Wow, pretty crazy, right? Okay, so what I was just doing there using this reduction uh, slider is you can choose how much you want the noise to be reduced. And I would argue for analog recordings, like onto cassette, like... I assume many of you are here because of that. You don't want to go full on and reduce like 100%. Check out what it sounds like when I do that. Can't win. I can't win. I can't win. That's weird and artifacty. It's starting to affect the music poorly. How about now? Well, I'm still around. You still doubt me. How about now? It's kind of like a dial in your hiss to taste <laughs> for your cassette. Cause here, check this out again. Can't win. Bypass. I can't win. We're noisy. I can't win. And now you can still hear it. You can still hear the hiss. It's not gone. But I'm still You still It's a much more pleasing to listen to. Now I could just say like, oh, that's it, we're done. But I really want to show you one of my other techniques I use for denoising. And a really important tool on this plugin is your output noise only check. That's where you can really, really hear what is going on. So let's play that section again. That have been okay. Now, what am I listening for? Really what I'm listening for now is 
to make sure that the plugin is not removing musical noises. So check this out. I'm still outputting just the noise. Does it make sense what I just did there? So again, outputting the noise only, I'm listening for if it if the plugin is taking away musical things because we don't want that. I don't want that to happen. So this artifact control f section it has something that it's trying to catch called musical noise. And to my ears, the higher the number, the more it's it's uh, uh, catching, you know, like maybe harsher sounds of the guitar. But again, that's not what we want. So that's why I slide this further to the left. And I've greatly increase the reduction to hear what this is doing. It's really that simple. Isotope is doing some magical things. Just to remind you, let's go back and listen to a section with the uh, no, denoiser, engaged, and then disengaged. Hint when it scream. It's the best that I've been, despite the fact. I can't win. I can't win. I can't win. My head in the clouds, people. But basically, now you've denoised your track. You've thrown some mastering, you know, your mix bus stuff on there, a little bit of compression and EQ, and it's ready to be sent off for distribution. Pretty fun, pretty exciting. It's time to share your music with the world. Anyway, with that, back to you, Other Made on Tape Man. Thanks, Other Made on Tape Man. I wrote some notes for myself uh, the other day when I was walking down the street so I wouldn't forget my thoughts on this very topic. I'm just gonna read them to you. This is kind of a, 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 a denoise confessional. You could tell I was feeling a little bit guilty for using it at all. So, when collaborating with other artists and musicians, I will always ask what the comfort level is with noise on the final mix. Again, for me and my music, I have a very high comfort level, but that's partly because of the way I record. Mostly direct, mostly hot, the noise floor gets suppressed even without noise reduction DBX. Again, I know there are analog purists out there who might think very poorly of this denoising technique. They might argue, and they might be correct, that the sounds should have been recorded right or correctly on the way in to the tape. I would have to disagree with the purists for two main reasons. First reason is that this is the 21st century and I like to use all the tools that are available to me and inspire me to make music. Full stop. The second reason I would disagree with that analog purist, that hypothetical straw man that I'm creating, is my entire philosophy of what recording is. I am most keen and interested in capturing a unique musical moment. I'm a musician and an artist first and foremost before I ever even got into engineering at all. So on this particular day, the performance was more important to capture to me as best as possible in the time we had than it would have been to interrupt the artist. He was ready to go. Jimmy was ready. He was rehearsed and he nailed it on his first take. As an artist and musician, there is no greater buzzkill than like, oh, no, 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 we gotta stop, we gotta, uh, it's not working. Something, whatever, fix this, fix that. Obviously within reason, uh, I totally understand technological issues, it happens in many fields. Anyway, this is my, my last thought that I wrote to myself. Uh, is that I hope that I'm getting my point across with this video and this talk here at the end. I'm just trying to say, don't get totally hung up on gear or the sounds that you're getting immediately. Music itself can be very enigmatic and I firmly believe the job of recording is to catch lightning in a bottle. And since it's the 21st century, know that the recording quality isn't necessarily destroyed by your choice right in the beginning. I know it's ambiguous 99 times out of 100. 
I will always say, get the right sounds going in. But that wasn't the case that day, and this is how you fix it. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening. I would like to thank my patrons over on Patreon. Find the links below for that, and you can go listen to some of my original noisy music. Links for that are below as well. Uh, with that, as always, is peace and be good to each other. Uh, okay. High five.